Okay, so so just quickly the um, the the, the uh, angiography. Um, I'm sure you guys know what angiography is. Uh, we use fluoroscopy, which is a sort of X-ray movie. Um, we place a catheter in individual vessels and inject and uh, take pictures. And, and you guys, during your neurosurgical training, will uh, perform angiography. Um, you know, we train the neurosurgical residents at our uh, practice. Um, uh, it's becoming more and more of an integral part of neurosurgical practice, really, uh, particularly if you plan to do any sort of vascular work. Um, and this is just uh, depicting, you know, the, the level of detail that we can, you know, first of all, you need to be aware of the individual structures, obviously the vertebral body or the corpus and uh, the lamina spinous process, but then that allows you to know that you're dealing with pre-laminar branches and retrocorporal branches, for example. And we depicted these re really nicely using uh, DynaCT or tomographic CT using angiographic data. Um, the artery of Adamkovitz is a key structure and, and you recognize this guy because of the, the hip and bend um, and its central placement. Uh, so here's the cadaveric section and here's um, the angiographic section. This is, it's very important in any spinal angiography procedure to be aware of where Adamkovitz is and also where the other uh, key, um, depending on the region of the spine you're looking at, some of the key, what we call radicular medullary feeders are. Um, here you can see the anterior spinal artery coursing down. Um, the anterior spinal artery is supplied by multiple radicular medullary feeders in this sort of stepwise process. And you lose more and more of these, fe these feeders as you, as you get older. Um, uh, this is showing you higher up at Dankovitz and then lower down this uh, anterior spinal artery, which is contiguous all the way down, um, ends in what we call the basket. And, and uh, the basket is contiguous with the paired posterior spinal arteries, which are also fed by radicular medullary feeders here. And um, that's just labeled on this, on this section. Um, this, uh, this is just uh, an example of getting faked out, thinking that you're seeing the, uh, the Adamkovitz when, when you're not really, um, and, and different ways you can, you can uh, figure out what, you, what you're actually looking at. Um, this is an example of a, of a dural AVF, and, and just a reminder to, uh, more to you know, angiographers to, to be aware that they need to look at all levels of the spine um, in order to in order to try and fight feeders for um, shunts such as dural arteriovenous fistulae. Um, just to show you that you know our technology is getting better at cross-sectional imaging. Um, you know we can we can use uh, CT angiography and MR angiography to uh, depict a lot of these vascular structures, which were only really feasible using angiography. Nowadays, what we'll typically do if if there's a clinical suspicion of, for example, a dural AVF, we'll uh, perform an MRI and an MRA first. Um, that often would give, well, not always, but you know, probably the majority of the time when there is a dural AVF, we'll be able to see uh, the feeder um, on, on the MRA. Um, and, and then that will allow us to do a limited uh, angiogram rather than doing an angiogram of uh, the whole spine, which is obviously uh, preferential for the patient. Um, and again, using cinematic rendering, we can take the same data set and we can really depict the Damkovitz really nicely, really depict these individual feeders supplying the anterior spinal artery. Um, so you have anterior spinal artery, radicular medullary feeder, and then an additional radicular medullary feeder, this being the principal one, which we'd call a Damkovitz. Uh, just some more views of that. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.